Coming up in this video, a detailed analysis of a retail version of the new Shimano R9200P power meter. And after extensive testing both indoors and out, I answer the question, have the issues with the previous generation power meter from Shimano been addressed with this updated release? First, some history and some background with Shimano power meters. Now, I have extensive history testing and reporting on dual-sided power meters based on the Shimano crankset design. My report, published back in 2019, outlined in detail the issues that power meter companies, not just Shimano, have when using those cranksets as dual-sided meters. The issue identified across all vendors was with the right-hand side, and that was due to the crank design. Keith Wakeham, who really knows his stuff when it comes to power meters, including being involved in a number of power measuring patents, has published a brilliant analysis video of exactly what's occurring with the right-hand side. That video accompanied my report. In the last few years, there's been a continual rise in popularity of power meter ownership. Shimano have acquired the pioneer power meter business. And back in Q3 2021, Shimano announced its second generation power meters that accompanied the new 9200 and 8100 12-speed group set releases. The new crankset, while very similar in design to the previous generation, was claimed to provide more consistency when used as a power meter. And here we are in Q3 2022, and the second generation power meters are now available to purchase on the retail market. In November 2021, I did perform some initial testing of an R9200P, which is supplied on a bike OEM, with not so favorable results. However, that testing was limited. My data sets from that initial testing was provided to Shimano, along with an offer to continue providing data from further tests. That offer still stands, but they've shown no interest in that to date. So I've purchased this R9200P myself. And thankfully, Pushies here in Australia had a 15% off site-wide discount code the other week. So this power meter has cost me $2,064.65. Even with the discount, it's not that cheap. Now, given the attention my Shimano power meter report from a few years back has had, I was very, very keen to see if they have addressed the issues that I found with that meter using my testing protocol. I've also just upgraded my giant road bike to the 8100 12-speed group set. So this crankset would be a perfect addition for that, also being very, very useful in testing power meters and smart trainers, which I do quite often. That's assuming these new power meters work as per spec. Speaking of specifications, here they are on screen. So it's a Shimano Holotech 2 crankset. That's the underlying base physical hardware. It's a dual-sided meter with sensors on both sides. Power accuracy claim for the Durace version, the 9200, is plus or minus 1.5%. The Ultegra version, the 8100, is plus or minus 2%. Of Amp Plus, you'll get the standard data sets. So power cadence, left, right, power balance, torque effectiveness, pedal smoothness, battery level. Over Bluetooth, you'll get a subset of that. And there's also a four vector mode, which I believe has been adopted from the Pioneer technology they've acquired and will give you some metrics on the 360 of your pedal stroke. More on that maybe a little later in the video. Active temperature compensation on the unit has an internal rechargeable battery with 300 hours of runtime. That's quite impressive. USB charging using the same cable as the 12-speed DI2 system. Again, that's very useful. The 172.5 mil version of this crankset comes in at 684 grams as measured in the Llama Lab. That's quite impressive. Shimano provide connectivity to the power meter via the eTube app, which does configuration, firmware updates, etc. And the unit itself also has a status LED and a little button where you can perform zero offsets without having to run through all the menus on your bike computer. On to the pricing, and it's one of the most expensive power meters on the market, coming in at $1,470 US dollars. Here in Australia, without the discounts, you're looking at just under $2,500 and euro around $1,400. The package that arrived on the doorstep was rattling around a little bit. So here is the first opening and not quite the presentation I expected for such a highly priced item. Things are rattling around in there. Not metal on metal, so that's okay. It should be fine, but just a bit of a mess to be honest and, and quite minimal, which is okay, I guess, for packaging. It's about the crank set, but a bit of an underwhelming unboxing, I've got to be honest. Here is the full inventory of what came in the box. We had the crank set, obviously, the frame magnet and two magnet caps, depending on the color of your bike, the installation tool for that, so a little bracket there to show you where to install the magnet in the correct position, charge cable, and the non-drive side installation tool as well. Installation was very straightforward, just a little more process involved with the magnet installed there on the frame, drive side on, non-drive side in, and a different little tool used for the, well, what used to be the end cap. Little retainer clip there and the electronics plugged in for the non-drive side. 
snugging those down just initially and then down with the torque wrench as per spec, which is important for a power meter. And then on with the end cap and job done. Quite easy. Then it was over to the eTube mobile app from Shimano to do the magnet calibration. Quite an easy process. It runs you through here on screen. You need the bike upright and on level ground, at which point you rotate the crank to wake it up. And then you also rotate the crank around to find out where it interacts with the magnet. And it tells you here on screen to stop turning when the blue light illuminates. And then once you hit that position, you hit next. And then you use the camera on the phone to line up the crank set. So I've got it here, lining things up neatly from the center of bottom bracket to the center of the pedal spindle. You hit go. Okay on that. And then it records the angle of the crank where the magnet interacts with the sensor. From there, an initial zero offset is performed. Now the image I have there on the left in the background is just a static image. I didn't record myself doing this, but the crank should be at six o'clock when doing that. Okay, with that now complete, it's over to check I'm on the latest firmware, which is very important that I have a record of this for future reference. Jumping into the settings, this power meter is currently on 4.1.1, the latest firmware released May 25th, 2022. And this is the firmware that I'll be completing all my testing with. Onto my testing, and over the last few weeks, this unit as a crank set has been absolutely flawless. Front changes are absolutely brilliant, up and down. It's nice and light. I've had no issues whatsoever with this unit as a crank set. As a power meter, I have 12 comparative data sets and around 16 hours of ride time. That's both indoors and outs. And it's been put up against a number of trusted power sources. Let's have a look how it's stacked up. Jumping over here to my favorite website on the internet, the DC Rainmaker Analysis Tool, where we can compare multiple fit files with their data as an overlay and see how things stack up. Now, before I get stuck into the eight data sets today, just a friendly reminder to hit that subscribe button here on the channel. It really helps out and allows me to continue producing content like this. It's support from the viewers, such as yourself, which keeps the wheels in motion here, and I do really appreciate it. And with that, let's get into the details. Today, I have eight data files to go through of the 12 that I've collected. This may take some time to go through, but I think it's important to have a really, really close look at what's going on with this power meter, as people really wanna know how an expensive power meter from one of the flagship cycling companies operates. And with that, let's get stuck right into it straight away. We have the Kicker 5, we have the Asioma Duos, and we have the Shimano 9200P. Overall, standing a little further back than normal, 179, 178, 178, things look amazing. And from the outset, on the steady state, everything looked really, really good. What you're seeing here on screen is a standard Llama lab test, my own protocol that I've used for all the other Shimano power meter testing that I have done and all the other power meters actually in general and smart trainers. Jumping into the 200 and 250 watt steady state erg mode. 224, 224, 223.4, that's within spec. I was very, very happy to see those numbers early on. So for the steady state stuff, everything was looking great. After a warm up, a zero offset, and away we go. First sprint, and down the rabbit hole we go with issue number one. The Shimano R9200P reporting a little under what both the Asio Majuros and the Kicker was reporting here, by what I would call not a insignificant amount. Pulling up the left right power of that, and one of the meters, so the Duo is a dual sided meter, we have two meters on that, and the Shimano 9200P is a dual sided meter, two meters on that. One of those meters was reading low, and that was the Shimano right-hand side, and that was the first sprint that I performed. Out of the saddle, maximal sprint, right-hand side of the Asio Majuro was okay. Onto the 22nd over and unders, varying between 150 and 450 watts, depending on the interval that I'm doing. 257, 258, 255.9. Look quick back at the envelope math on that one. I'd say that's within spec and passable for all three power meters. The takeouts from the very first Llama lab test was that the steady state 200 and 250 were very, very good. The sprints, something was happening on the right hand side that required further investigation. And the overs and unders, so from the 150 to 350 and the 150 to 450 were also pretty good. Pulling up data set number two, now this was outdoors, Shimano 9200P up against the Asioma Duos on the white swan loop, outdoors. First up, a sprint. Uh, there's a bit of an offset here with the recording interval. 
But jumping down the left right power and things again are not looking good on the right hand side of the Shimano crank. Similar to what I saw on the sprint indoors, outdoors performing the same sprint effort, the right hand side on the Shimano 9200p was reading low. Another observation made later on in the ride was there was an increasing separation between the two power meters. So early on things weren't too bad within a few watts. Later on, some steady state through here. We have 214 versus 206. The 9200p was reading, what's that, eight watts higher than the Favero's. Not within 1.5%. So more investigation needed on that later on in the ride for something that I've seen in the past, and that's a drifting offset with a power meter. Now typically the Favero's do not drift their offset, and there is a way to check which meter may be drifting out, and that is to stop, do a manual zero on the meter that you think is out, and see which way the numbers go from there. If the offset remains the same, then obviously the power meter that you've done the manual zero on is okay. If the offset then changes, then something has happened with the meter that you've done the offset on. It's either drifted high or drifted low. On to data set number three, back indoors, and time to press some pain points of the sprint performance of this power meter. Kicker 5, Asiyo Majuo, Shimano 9200p with five sprints. The four are what I'll focus on at the start here to try and save some time. Diving into the first sprint, one power meter reading low, and that was the Shimano R9200p. Pulling up the left-right data recorded on the duos and the Shimano 9200p, and consistent with what we were seeing in previous sprints, the right-hand side was under-reading indoors up against the other meter, and also the total power there from the Wahoo Kicker 5. For the three subsequent sprint tests indoors, performed at exactly the same interval, it was a case of rinse and repeat, with the Shimano R9200P reading lower than the other two sources of power. Pulling up the left-right power of those three sprints, and the culprit was the right-hand side there on the Shimano power meter, reading low in those other three sprints as well. With that sprint issue arising both indoors and outdoors and indoors again repeatedly, I was pretty convinced there is a problem on the right-hand side for those peak power sprints. If you're asking yourself, is it the Asioma Duos? The answer there is no. Here is another sprint done with the Wahoo Power Links. Again, the Wahoo Power Link agreeing with the Kicker 5 and the Shimano under-reading on both of those. Definitely more than 1.5%. Pulling up the left-right balance of that sprint and further indication that the Shimano R9200P on the right-hand side is under-reading up against the Wahoo Fitness Power Link on the right-hand side, giving an overall lower reading than what it possibly should be. On to data set number five, where I've switched over the power meter pedals to the Garmin Rally XC200s. Units which perform quite well indoors. I was pretty confident putting them up against the Shimano 9200p and again the Kicker 5 as the baseline. After the warm-up, zeros were performed on all meters and into the steady state section here. Again, just confirming what I've seen before. 222.9, 224.8, 224.42, all within spec. Again, consistent to what I was seeing in my other indoor tests. And that gets my tick of approval there for the steady state section. Onto the maximal power sprint for that Llama Lab test and more consistency from the Shimano power meter, reading lower than the other two power meters. The culprit, yeah, the right hand side again. With the consistency that I was seeing there in the sprints against the Kicker 5, the Asioma Duos, the Wahoo Power Links, and now the Garmin Rally pedals, it just wasn't up to spec. So it was time to shift my focus on testing over to the drifting offset. And it just so happened to be this data set was perfect for that. Now, after that hard sprint, the overs and unders performed here. You can see there, there's a lower performer in the 150 watt zone, 350, 350, and just slightly there in the 450 zone, although that wasn't too bad, but there was an underperformer. That was the Shimano power meter. All up there, we're looking at 187, 196, 196. Again, not within 1.5% of those other two meters. So right here on the ride, I stopped, stepped off the bike, put the cranks at the correct angle, and performed a zero offset only on the Shimano power meter. The Garmin rallies do have an auto zero functionality, but there wasn't enough time for that to kick in. So the only difference here for the next set of over and unders was that the Shimano power meter had been zero offset manually. And that fixed the problem I was seeing. 237, 238, 239, all within a few watts. Again, perfect. Indicating the Shimano power meter had drifted its offset during that session and to bring it back into line with those other meters, it required a manual zero. Not ideal. Data set number six, and this was from an outdoor ride with a second set of Asioma Duos. I have multiple pairs, so this is the fourth pedal-based system that I've compared the Shimano 9200P to. Nice flat riding out there in Horsham, great for uh, fast Ks, and another pain point was found. There are some small hills out on this uh, plush Hannon's Loop. If you're a local, you know where it is. Two small rises, 
at which point I was out of the saddle in the big ring, just sort of uh, you know, slow cadence over, big strengthy efforts, and these power meters disagreed a lot. You can see the data there, it's a bit messy with some start and stops, but through here, well out, and through here, well out. Now where the mouse is right there on the screen, 437 on the Shimano versus 471 on the Asiomas. That's a big difference. Of the four power meters on the bike with both meters having dual sides, there was only one being problematic. And yeah, it's the right hand side on the Shimano meter out of the saddle in the big ring, reading significantly lower. If you're asking, could it be the crank that's correct and the pedal that's off in this scenario here? Well, my question there would be, why is the left hand side fine? The left hand pedal matches the left hand crank. The right hand pedal is very close to the left. I was pretty balanced, but the right hand crank was significantly lower in its power reporting. So we've got sprints, we've got a drifting offset, we have problems on the right hand side with out of the saddle efforts. Things are looking pretty disappointing for my $2,000 investment. But again, with my testing, I'll always loop back to problems that I found to make sure they're repeatable and not once offs. Speaking of repeatable, two little sections through here. This is Carmichael's Road. Again, shout out to the locals, you'll know this road here. Here are two sections where I was pedaling in the small ring on the front, mid cassette somewhere up the back, and I noticed the power was off through here. You can see the difference. At this exact data point here, we have 245, 232. That's consistent through that little section there of a few minutes with the Favero's reading higher, definitely outside of 1.5%, even factoring in any margins of error from the Favero's. I stopped, zero offset, just the Shimano meter right here, and things were back to normal. Again, more evidence that there is a shifting offset on the Shimano meter. Now, if there was no issue with the Shimano meter and not touching the Favero, let's say that's the baseline because I hadn't touched it, and if there was nothing wrong with the Shimano reading lower, nothing would have changed. However, when zeroing the Shimano meter, it then came up and started to meet what the Favero was reading too, indicating that offset had drifted on the Shimano power meter. Data set number seven, another big open sky road out there in Horsham, big long flat roads. And the initial same setup as the day before, so Shimano 9200P up against the Asioma Duos. And for the first half an hour or so, you'd be pleased to see that steady state riding, 208 versus 208. Happy days until a little later on in the ride. In the tailwind section through here, I put the hammer down a little harder than normal. 299 versus 213, not within 1.5%. Jumping down to the left, right, 154, 153, left power, agreeing with the pedals. Right side on the Shimano, 144.99, so 145. Right hand side on the Asioma, 160. There's a big difference there. That was in the big ring at about 85 to 90 cadence, and those two power meters were not agreeing at all. To take advantage of those big, fast open roads and the tailwind, I performed a test that added up two of the issues with this meter. So I'd seen it drift a little bit with that offset, and I did some big ring strength efforts. And the data was consistent with what you'd expect. Here are those two sections here. Southbound to the power station. Again, if you're from Horsham, you know where that is. And a big discrepancy between the two power meters there in the 5211 on the back. 266, 284, not even close to 1.5%. At the end of that road, I stopped. Zero offset, just the Shimano meter. And did a little ring ride back to the start of that two kilometer road. Things were looking pretty happy there. Now, the exact same test was performed. 52, 11 on the back, low cadence, starting off at 250, finishing off around 300. Now the difference there was a little less because I corrected the zero offset drift, but the issue with the right hand side reading lower on those big strength efforts was still there. So I'd gone from a 20 watt difference to a 10 watt difference. In a way, I was somewhat pleased to see that data come out as it did. It confirmed the zero offset issue with the Shimano meter, and it confirmed something was up with those big ring strength efforts. So consistency in results, that's a good thing. Lastly, data set number eight, the last data set we'll look at today, the grand finale. And the question that I had before even getting on the bike for this session was, what was for dinner? But I also wanted to know if I could replicate all the issues that I was having with this meter in one single session. The answer was, yeah, I could. So diving into the details here with the Asioma Duos, Shimano Power Meter, up against the Elite Doretto XR. Diving into the steady state, just to confirm that the steady state stuff was still good. After a number of rides, 217, 217, 215, look close enough to get a pass from me there. 
And with the click of my fingers, I will take out the Elite Doretto XR and just put it up against the Asio Maduro. So the data sets here are a little cleaner to look at. And then jumping into a hard out of the saddle effort where Eric from Zwift Insider put us all to the sword in the sprint. So standing up out of the saddle, uh, not really swinging the bike side to side, doesn't happen indoors, but we had a massive difference between the two meters here. So 974, 930 on the Shimano's being robbed of watts and losing the sprint there in Zwift. Again, consistent with what I was seeing outdoors. So big ring, hard out of the saddle efforts, Shimano meter reading low. Jumping ahead to the peak power sprint on this. And again, consistency there with the Shimano reading low up against the Fivero. Two strength effort tests in the saddle right here. This was in the big ring and the discrepancy through here with the Shimano reading low of 20 watts, quite significant. I spun around, put it in the small ring and did the same test and it wasn't too bad. Indicating there's something up with big ring versus little ring in the strength effort area. But I was quickly running out of time and patience to test this. So I tested it on the flat again with the big ring and again more consistency there. Always lower on the Shimano power meter in the big ring by now a significant amount due to that right hand side problem. So that was three from three confirming the sprint still reading low on the Shimano power meter indoors. Out of the saddle hard efforts still low. Strength efforts in the big ring reading low. The last one to test was the drifting offset. It was done right here. Back to 200 watts erg. And this is very, very slight, but it's still occurring. So 200 watts erg here. Asio Majuos up against the Shimano. 196 on the Asio Majuos, 193 on the Shimano. I stopped, performed the zero offset, which gave us a little blip here, and did the exactly the same cadence, exactly the same effort. This time round, we have the Asio Majuos reading 198, we have the Shimano's reading 200.89. With that manual zero changing the numbers from the Shimano power meter, that was four from four, confirming the pain points for this one single session. So there's no question the R9200P is an improvement over the previous generation power meter from Shimano. But, and as you saw with the data sets there, I can't trust this meter. It's not within spec. It's not within 1.5% of other meters. It's not within 1.5% of itself. As it drifts and it requires a manual zero during operation, that's unacceptable. So the pain point summary there, and again, this is all leaning towards the right hand side. The right side reports low in sprints, the right reports low out of the saddle in hard efforts, the right reports low in low cadence strength efforts, in particular when in the big ring, and the offset drifts during use, requiring me to stop, manually zero the unit to bring it back into line with the other power meters that I was comparing it to. Before I forget, a quick side note on the force vector mode, formerly known as pedal monitor mode. I've chosen not to test this. The unit couldn't get the basics of power measuring right, so I wasn't gonna go down the rabbit hole of force vector, advanced measuring, and not knowing if what I was looking at was correct in any way. So my conclusion on this for now is for the price they're charging, for the resources that Shimano have at their disposal, and for the time they've had to address the known issues with the previous generation meter, the power meter that I've purchased with my own money does not meet my expectations. In fact, and what I'll wrap this up on is it doesn't meet its own technical specifications, and that's a big, big problem. Thanks for watching.